There's so much more to Panama than the Panama Canal. This little piece of tropical heaven bridging North and South America is gaining in popularity as a feast for the senses. But did you know that it's also a feast? Panama, good food, good wine, good people. It's the place to be. Chef Pierre de Janon knows Panama's a feast. His restaurant is in the city's old quarter, but the flavors are all new. Some people say my food is sexy. Chef Coquito Calvo has both casual and fine dining covered in this city. I've catered for uh, many, many uh, well-known uh, movie stars. And Charlie Collins keeps his city and country all in balance. Yes, Panama is a hot spot for food, and we're gonna tell you all about it on Three Chefs, One City. Three Chefs, One City looks at the world's great food destinations through the eyes of its three most celebrated chefs. This time, we're in Panama. We're checking out what Panamanian food is and what it's becoming. I am Chef Cuquita. I am Chef Pierre de Llanon. I'm Chef Charlie Collins. This is my Panama. This is my Panama City. This is my Panama. First up, Chef Pierre de Llanon. Chef Pierre de Llanon, who is he? Chef Coquita, in Panama there's only two good things to do. Go to the Panama Canal and Tantalo, so you better know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Pierre worked extensively in some of the best hotels in Chicago before returning to his Panamanian roots and opening the first Panamanian tapas restaurant. Casco Viejo is the uh, older city of Panama, surrounded by seven churches and plenty of restaurants and good food. The name Casco Viejo literally means helmeted and to get old. So this walled city was built to be protected and to last. The population here is very attractive because they have that sexiness that the real Panamanian has. His restaurant, Tantalo Kitchen, is situated in the historic Casco Viejo district of Panama. The streets here are reminiscent of Havana, Cuba, or even New Orleans, Louisiana. We put Tantalo here in Casco Viejo because of the area, because it's the old city is uh, up and coming, definitely. Real estate here is getting like really expensive, so it was an opportunity for us to establish Tantalo here. Casco Viejo is a rebuild of a historic area that was destroyed by pirates back in 1671, namely the infamous Captain Morgan. Tantalo is the first rooftop bar in Panama City, actually. You can see the actual city, you can see the old city of Casco Viejo, you can also see the Cerro Ancon, which is over there with the Panamanian flag and nobody's gonna take that view that we have up here because nobody can build anything higher than us right now because of the law. Family really seems to be an integral part of Panama as people get together, enjoy the local culture, city offerings, and of course, food. You know, if you're married with children, they gotta support you if, if this is really your passion. If you, your passion is to cook and they, they gotta support you and I really, you know, admire my wife and my son because they, they have sacrificed a lot of time without me. I wouldn't be able to get this success that I have so far without my family. I'm an octopus guy. I'm gonna present to you the Tantalo octopus. Octopus is something that all the Panamanians like. This is the octopus. Obviously, it's pre-cooked already. We braise it in some uh, red wine, vinegar, uh, garlic, um, bay leaves, and some. Also, we chop, uh, we throw some in some onions to to the pot, and just braise it for 45 minutes until we get that tenderness. All good chefs are a little particular when it comes to selecting ingredients, and Chef Pierre is no exception. 
every chef wants to work with fresh ingredients. Yes, Panama is in the tropics. Yes, Panama is surrounded by two oceans. But we don't have that many variety of, of fresh ingredients. That's why chefs have got to be creative and try to make some explosions and make it tasty with what we have. Olive oil is always good to use. It you know, doesn't matter how you use it. It's, it's good for your body and it's great for cooking. We're going to add up our tender octopus. When I went to Le Cordon Bleu, what I learned was the why, the why of everything in the kitchen. Why do you have to blanch some asparagus before you're gonna do a banquet? You know, everything has a why. That's my philosophy in the kitchen with my cooks. We add some uh, coconut milk. This is great consistency, great flavor to the dish. That's where, where the Caribbean shows up. Perfect. I would say Panamanian cuisine is a mixture between uh, Caribbean and Spanish cuisine. We're just gonna add some cilantro. Cilantro is like our draw. In Panama, cilantro, we eat it, we smoke it, we do everything with it. I have 60 uh, staff members. That's including from kitchen to storeroom, waiters, bartenders, and you know, the whole ball game. Uh, donde, donde Miquel. Me subieron un pulpo que era el ajillo, pero el ajo estaba quemado. My philosophy is just try to give as much as you can because I do it for Tantalo and I do it for you guys, so you should do it too, you know. So it's lead, lead by example. Every time that you play something, you gotta be like a dumb proof. Like a dumb can carry that plate and it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna fall apart, you know, because you know, there are some waiters that they just drop it and they don't care how they present it and you know, if that falls apart, it's, it's not going to be very good. More cilantro, a little bit of roasted uh, fresh coconut, uh, reduction of uh, balsamic vinegar. Voila, Chef Charlie, here's your octopus. Try to beat this up, all right? I'll see you. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Chefs definitely can be rock stars with the ladies. We, we have a charm, I don't know what it is, because we are not the best good looking guys, but you know, we got a charm probably because of the cooking skills or any other skills that we may have. But usually we feel that we are like rock stars and we are, you know, always attracting women. Coming up next, a TV and a cookbook star working both ends of the culinary scale. How well does that work out? We'll find out when we meet Chef Coquito Calvo. Three Chefs, One City is in Panama, a destination known to attract seekers of diversity. From sun and sand to jungles and mountains, Pursuers of all things gather here in droves and stay for the food, food, food. And one of the founders of the food scene in Panama is, without question, television personality, entrepreneur, and chef, Coquito Calvo. I am Chef Coquita, and this is my Panama City. Panama is in my heart. My grandfather was one of the founder of the country. Panama is a melting pot of ethnicities, and its cuisine is influenced by its diverse population. Panamanian food has soul. It's joyful and spicy, like our people. Panamanian food is said to be influenced by Afro-Caribbean, Spanish, indigenous, South American, European, and more. I'm a chef here at the Bristol Hotel, and I also am a restaurant owner. Come on in. Always food has been related to me by joyful moments and loves. Ay, how come this is not in Spanish? <laughs> Spanish or English, Chef Coquito knows a thing or two about running a restaurant. Coquita Coquita, it's a dream I had where you can taste Panamanian traditional food in a very nice ambience. Most of our dishes are traditional recipes from my family. It's all fresh 
and cook every day. My daughter, Ana Laura, is the one who takes care of this place. It's really like a family. We take all the tips and pay private school for the staff kids. Some of my people have been working with me for the last 40 years. I feel so lucky to have so many loyal people with me. This is Ines, she's been with me for the last 40 years in my ups and downs, but always loyal. The people here are very welcoming and sincere. Be careful, they will always tell you the truth. Panama is a very small country, so you have the opportunity to go to the mountains, have lunch in the Caribbean, and then dinner in the Pacific. Where else in the world can you do that? The Republic of Panama separates the Caribbean and Pacific Oceans by a mere 80 kilometers. Good seafood is part of life here, and some of the best can be found in an excellent seafood market right in Panama City, where fish is brought in daily from the Pacific by local fishers and sold at prices you wouldn't believe. So if you like seafood, you're going to love Panama City. Here we are at El Mercado del Marisco. Every good chef in Panama will be here very early in the morning to buy the best fresh seafood in the world. The indigenous meaning of this country's name, abundance of fish, reflects Panama's reputations as a destination for the best of the best. When I go to the market, it's not just to buy food. It's to find people with energy that love work and that really enjoy what they are doing. These people are very proud of what they do and what they sell. One of the unique things about Panama is that you can find fresh seafood from the Pacific or from the Atlantic every day here. The city has changed a lot in the last 10 years, but at the same time, we're still having this special feeling of a very small country. Exceptional access to ingredients like seafood can be a game changer when it comes to taste. I love to buy fresh crabs from the Atlantic here. Imagine how delicious this must be. And for a small bite, this is beautiful. Baby lobsters. These are the best ceviches in Panama. More than 20 kinds. They have Italian ceviche, Greek ceviche. You have to come here and taste them. This is her version of a Mediterranean ceviche. It's delicious, and imagine this is just three dollars. Three dollars for lunch? I think there's something fishy going on here, Kikito. This is fresh tuna from the Pacific. It's just three dollars a pound. Can you imagine how good you can eat here in Panama? This is the best fish in Panama. A big and nice tender corvina. Very fresh. We're gonna buy one and do something especially for you. Hmm, what exactly is for dinner? Salsi Puedes, for me, it's a window of Panama to the world. To have a restaurant in a hotel is an opportunity to have a lot of people from outside Panama tasting our food. It was a dream. It was the first Panamanian gourmet food restaurant in Panama. Action. Now that we're back from the market, we're gonna start making our famous ceviche. Panama, for me, tastes like mountains, sea, and tropical fruit. So the, all these elements are in this recipe. We're gonna start with the corvina, the sea bath, that has to be fresh. The best reward I can get is to have somebody that is enjoying my food. I'm always asking immediately when I serve something if they like it. For me, the colors are very important in food. Food not only has to taste good, but it has to look beautiful. That's very important. If I wasn't a chef, I for sure would be a painter. I paint every day on my plates. 
I like to do some things very creative, but very simple, so everybody can do it at home. My food is based in traditional recipes, and I use a lot of forgotten ingredients. Panama used to be the port where all the gold will go to Spain. So gold is very important for me in my food. I always put a little touch so you remember what Panama is. Cooking is not about following a recipe. It's about expressing yourself through the food. Some people say my food is sexy. <laughs> All right, lovely. I had a TV show for seven years and it's an honor, it's amazing when I'm walking in the street and everybody or a lot of people say, oh, I'm doing tonight your recipe and they don't know how much tricks we have for TV. So they think everything is easier. It's so funny because sometimes I know there are going to be difficult recipes. <laughs> All right. When a chef works both inside and outside the city of Panama, how do you compare the two? Chef Charlie Collins is the answer, coming up next. Charlie, Charlie, I'm where the action is. Hey, Kukita, out here is pretty good. <laughs> Three Chefs, One City is in Panama, a place of hidden treasures, beautiful skylines, and a variety of flavors. Simple food done right could be this destination's motto, and Charlie Collins has this down to a science. I'm Chef Charlie Collins, and this is my Panama. Nobody knows Panama like I know Panama. You know, if you don't have nothing nice to say, you better sip it up. Pierre, be polite, otherwise I'm gonna tell your mom. <laughs> I am the executive chef for the Panamonte Inn and Spa in Boquete, Chiriquí and I also own a uh, catering business in Panama City. City chef, country chef. Huh, now this could get interesting. I started uh, uh, baking cookies in my family farm, our coffee plantation here in Boquete, and ever since that day, I became interested in, in kitchen and cooking. The inn is gonna be 100 years old, and my family has had it for the last uh, 68 years. And I think that uh, uh, the feeling that everybody gets when they arrive at the Panamonte is that you're in a big house and that you're home away from home. My parents bought a coffee farm, which is uh, Lady Estate, back in 1957. Out of that farm came out the first coffee to be exported from Panama. And uh, slowly, Panama's coffee started becoming uh, known uh, in other parts of the world. Panama's geisha coffee is actually a bargain in the high-end expensive coffee market. The fact that we have uh, one of the top selling uh, geisha coffees in the world has a lot to do with the microclimate, uh, the climatic conditions, and we are providing a top quality and a very fine type of coffee. Rich in flavor and small in yields. This coffee is also a favorite among Japanese importers. Mm, I can smell it from here. I've catered uh, for Sean Connery, for Piers Brosman, for um, Prince Albert from Monaco. Uh, the last five presidents, uh, I've done all kinds of events for them. And President Bush uh, was here in Panama in 2006, and I did the welcome lunch. Panamanians are definitely very proud of their canal. Ships traveling between New York and San Francisco save well over 12,000 kilometers by using the Panama Canal instead of going around Cape Horn. When the Panama Canal was turned over by the United States to Panamanian administration, it was very positive. And I think that we have proven to the United States and to the world that we are capable of handling and administering the canal the proper way and it has produced an enormous amount of money to the Panamanian government and to the Panamanian people. I think that the last figure was $1.5 billion, whereas before we received a rental fee of $5 million a year. I took lessons from Chef uh, Jack Pepin uh, in the States, and he was a great influence. Uh, and I would say that locally, uh, both my grandmother and my mother, uh, who were great cooks and, and loved to entertain, and showed me the art of entertaining. 
uh, uh, were very instrumental in, in, in my interest in kitchen and in the cuisine. I told him everything he knows. That's for sure. <laughs> Aw, don't we all want a mum like that? So we're going to start with um, tasajo. Tasajo is dried beef that uh, originally in Panama, uh, when there was no electricity, coffee field workers would hang the beef over the fire pit and it was smoked and dried. And that way they had beef throughout the week. New Panamanian cuisine is, uh, for me, is taking our indigenous ingredients and using classical French European uh, techniques and applying them to our ingredients and creating uh, dishes that are interesting, that are flavorful, and that uh, depict our heritage. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start pounding the pork. And I'm gonna pound it lightly. Careful with that hammer, Charlie. Watch your fingers. I'm gonna slice some onions, which are gonna be part of the uh, sandwich. Then I'm gonna take some yellow peppers and slice those julienne style. I studied in uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I traveled quite a bit uh, as a student. I always felt that uh, Panamanians were not proud of their cuisine, part of their gastronomy. So with the experience that I gained uh, abroad, I decided that uh, I would give our cuisine a more predominant uh, place in our cities than that typical uh, French cuisine and other styles of cooking uh, that were available in restaurants in Panama City. We're ready to uh, add the, uh, the pork and we're going to incorporate this to the onions and the peppers and the garlic. Now we're going to add some salsa, which is like a sofrito, a Latin American Panamanian sofrito. You can't cook Panamanian style without culantro, which is uh, the coriander leaf. And it, the taste is very similar to the cilantro, uh, but it's a little bit more pungent. Uh, it's a little bit stronger. So now we're ready to uh, make our sandwiches. Here I have a nice batch of uh, hojaldres, nice and crispy, very light, nice and brown and puffy. And uh, they make a great substitution for bread. Ooh, a Panamanian twist on a pulled pork sandwich. Yes, please. So there you have the sandwich. New Panamanian cuisine. Enjoy. So there you have it. A look at Panama and its food scene through the eyes of those who define it. Chef Pierre rocking the old city gates with the new city scene. Coquito Calvo, a master of both upscale and downtown. And Chef Charlie Collins with one foot in the country and the other in the city. Panama may divide two oceans, but it is definitely united on great food. One of the world's great food destinations, revealed here on Three Chefs, One City.